Welcome to Old Guy Tech. The OGT.TV recording studio. Technology for the rest of us. 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 Hi, I'm Rob Charney with Old Guy Tech TV, and we're here on Political Today. Today, we have Richard Barb running for District 3 Supervisor in El Dorado County, and I think uh, Richard is going to be a great candidate, and we're really looking forward to talking to him. And Richard, thank you for joining us and, and uh, telling us a little bit about yourself and why you're running for Supervisor. So why don't you just jump into it and start out. Tell us what you got going. All right. Well, thanks, Rob. I appreciate being here, and I appreciate you taking the time to give me this opportunity to share my thoughts and let people know who I am. I've been in uh, small business all my life. Um, I'm a father. I've raised my family here in El Dorado County and I'm a very concerned citizen, community minded uh, man here in the community and these things are very important to me and so as a, a father and a businessman I've decided to get involved and hopefully make El Dorado County a little better place to raise our families and run our businesses and and hopefully uh, bring a little uh, local control back. Well, that's kind of neat. So uh, how long have you been in El Dorado County? 16 years. 16 Almost years. 17. My wife continues to correct me. I, I'm still one. trying to figure out what exactly is, you know, you know, when you're finally in, in with the in crowd, you know, we've been here since 82, and I still feel like we're outsiders when you talk to some of the people. <laughs> so <laughs> it works out real well. But uh, So let's, let's get right into it. Um, what do you think uh, is the biggest problem facing the county right now? Well, the current biggest struggle is jobs. We have seen a massive exodus of jobs, uh, not just because of local uh, policies, but the local um, condition for policy in business is that we've lost jobs, we've lost businesses, and we need to get that back. We need to change the direction we're going so that hopefully we'll see a change soon and not just wait for state and federal uh, policy to, to come around and bring that about for us. So you, you really do believe that at the supervisor level you're able to uh, help bring jobs to the county? Well, the government doesn't create jobs. Government creates a climate where business can flourish. And so my job as a supervisor would be to work on policy, to work on um, strategy for getting government out of the way. We need to reduce the uh, interference, the involvement of government in our business affairs so that people can actually make a profit. If a, if a business does not make money, they don't employ people. And uh, until that happens, we won't see a turn in the jobs. Well, what about um, incentives to bring business to here? This is always something you hear, uh, may it be federal, state, local. What kind of incentive? Why why would a business want to locate itself in El Dorado County? And what can you do to attract them to come to the county? Well, the only thing that attracts any business anywhere is the prospect of making a profit. And so when you, when you talk about incentives, um, the only incentives that government can offer really are staying out of the way. We, we see an overabundance of regulation. We see an overabundance of fees and taxes that are currently choking uh, our businesses. Uh, everywhere I go campaigning in this county, I encounter horror stories that relate to folks who deal with our local government, uh, the, the fee and regulation structure, the, the struggle that we have as individuals to even pursue our business uh, is compounded and hampered by um, exorbitant fees, difficulty, and how do I as an individual consider investing when the prospect of making a profit has been regulated or uh, stifled or delayed through process and, and regulation? Good, good. So um, why are small businesses so important to Colorado County? What, what is it that, that the small businessman brings to the county? Well, since the 1970s, studies have shown that it's small business that, that produces and employs the majority of uh, individuals in our community. Uh, large business can dramatically uh, change temporarily uh, the, the, the job status in any environment. But when you have a small business and you have a, a, a stable foundation with many businesses, uh, fluctuations in a given market don't affect, uh, in the same way, the job market. So, what do you feel um, 
or what do you consider the basic county services? Well, government was instituted originally, in my opinion, and I think its focus has to be on those services that individuals cannot efficiently or effectively provide for themselves. You've got uh, road maintenance, uh, our law enforcement, uh, our sheriff's department, particularly at county level, and fire uh, service districts. Uh, beyond that, we start uh, venturing into uh, specifics that, that uh, really take a hard look to justify. So what is the county now not addressing that you think it needs to be addressed? Are you referring to what does the county need to address in order to encourage job growth? Well, not only just job growth. What what is what is what is your plan uh, on the services that uh, the county provides? Do you do you feel that you're going to uh, reduce services? Do you feel you're going to leave them the same? Are are you going to when you get in? Is it your whole idea that you will go ahead and and look at the structure of the county as it is and and see if it needs some adjustment, some change, that type of thing? All right. When I'm on the board, one of the first um, pursuits for me is to, to have an overall review of county services. What are the needs in the county and how are those services truly uh, meeting the needs of our community? The, the tendency of government, um, particularly individual departments, is to lose the original uh, focus or purpose and by what we call creeping, just lose their original mission. They, they tend to um, find opportunities and ways to further their own department's usefulness. And what we end up with often is a, a system that continues to provide jobs for administrators when um, often the, the needed services have outlived their usefulness. It's interesting. So that that means that um, you that there is the possibility within the county that there's uh, departments or agencies or whatever maybe that really have you its usefulness has gone away no longer part of it and you plan on looking at that certainly I yeah. you know I when I look at what our supervisors have been um, struggling with the last few years I see that they are attempting to wrestle with some of these issues what we need is some fresh perspective um, we need some fresh energy, someone who will come in, in fact, more than just someone, um, who can actually look at some of these issues from uh, a fresh perspective, someone who's not in the system, who's not uh, beholden to interest, and uh, try and take that hard look that uh, is difficult for those who have been uh, in the system for a long period of time. Yes, yes. So what do you foresee as the biggest challenge that you're going to have? Well, this whole issue of jobs is a tough one. Um, people ask, why is the name of your committee Job Creators for Richard Barb? Um, part of the reason for that is we have many small business owners who are supporting me because they see some hope in actually addressing some of these issues. I see the greatest struggle is in addressing the entrenched systems that somewhat are archaic. I don't know if you're aware, our computer systems here in uh, El Dorado County at the government level are over 20 years old. Yes. The hardware and the software is yes. that old. Mm -hmm. And when you deal with a system that old, you can keep it running. And, and it's not going to just break down and collapse. But where we're facing uh, the greatest struggle is in keeping up with the technology in the world around us, in, in pursuing the ability to be efficient and actually address some of these issues in an old system. It's very difficult. Here's another issue related to that. Um, we have a, a personnel department that keeps this system running. It's almost like a dinosaur being fed. It takes more and more people all the time to not only keep it going but keep it relevant to this modern day we live in. And we have a number of those folks that are going to be retiring uh, in the near future here. I think we're at the ideal time to address um, our infrastructure systems as one of those issues to hopefully modernize and, and help simplify our process. Well, I know, I know for on the computer side of it, you're absolutely right. Uh, the, 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 we're running on legacy systems that, that are just still um, uh, Y2K problems that 
are still going on. So I, I can understand where you're coming from that. But you're talking about a lot of money. This is not going to come a lot of money. This is not going to come right. cheap. So how how do you feel it's going to affect the budget? And and what would you give? You know, where's the give and take? I mean, I'm, I understand exactly where you're coming with IT. But boy, our situation is going to be very expensive. Well, I think that what we have to do is uh, go back to what I was talking about earlier. Some of these um, programs and departments that we are currently still supporting and feeding um, might best be handled either in private business, small business, or in nonprofit organizations who do a really good job of meeting needs in the community. Uh, in, in recent days, uh, in campaigning, what it's done is it's taken me into the community in ways I've never been before. Um, I've been very involved in this community for many, many years. But I've been involved in organizations recently that are so um, dynamically involved in meeting the needs of the people in our community. And their services don't exactly overlap with, but in some ways, if given half a chance, they could actually, I think, replace some of the services that the county's providing in a much more efficient, much more personal and compassionate way. Okay, so in the rest of the world, we, we label that outsourcing. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that the direction I, that you're going in? Is I'm that not, what you're saying? I'm not real eager with the concept of outsourcing where government manages. I really like the idea of government getting out of the way. When I've talked to the people in this community and in, in some of those organizations that are dealing with individuals, the number one thing they have said to me is we wish government was out of the way so we could actually do what we do good. And, and where I was going with that originally, you asked the question on budgeting for computer systems. Right. If, the govern if our local government, if our county budget was not involved in, in some of those current um, areas of responsibility, those resources could be freed up to deal with some of these modern uh, issues that, that are facing us. I don't know if that uh, answered your question. Oh, no, it did. It did. Uh, it, it was trying to lead me into uh, to other areas. And, and uh, so I'm, I'm thinking a little bit about how about labor relations within the county and the county employees? What? Are, are our relations good? Are they not good? Are we having difficulties in certain areas? Um, wh what are you aware of? Well, I'm, I'm aware that they are. Uh, our board is currently involved with uh, renegotiating some of our labor contracts. Uh, the different tiered levels of uh, employment, you know, new employees versus old and what, what contracts uh, they operate under. We, as a... Um, not just a local government, we as a society have gone after this this concept that working for government entitles, and that's a scary word to use here, um, <laughs> <laughs> we have gone after this idea of, of uh, retirements and entitlements and ongoing support for those who have served, and what it's doing is it's bankrupting us. There is no business in America that operates this way uh, successfully long term. You cannot invest in something that does not give a return to the business and expect that it will uh, last indefinitely. And so when, when we deal with these issues of uh, labor and relations, I know the struggles that are going on. Uh, I grew up in a fireman's family. I know um, the men who have worked, the men and women who work and serve us, um, they have earned the right to what they've worked for. And I, I in no way would advocate going back and taking away what, what someone has worked for. On the other hand, I think we have to face that hard line of looking forward. Unless we change the direction we're going, there won't even be a structure to support uh, our obligations. So what what are really what are the county resources where where is the county money coming from well um where does it come from or yeah. where should it come well from? <laughs> i mean how about how about we answer it both ways where does okay. it come from and where, where we are tremendously um uh, fee-based county 
uh, property tax. Um, very stagnant um, structure that under the current system, as uh, I'll give you an example, with the decline in property values, our assessor's office is required to reassess on an annual basis. Well, if they do that, they're just cutting, cutting the, uh, the, the revenues right out of the county budget. Right. This year, the assessor's office has determined that they're going to be a little slow on reassessing property values. It's, it's necessary that we look at our structure. We have historically been um, stable-based revenue generating. We need to turn that around and look for revenues from profitable business venture. We need to promote business. We need to continue with our agriculture, our tourist business. We need to bring revenues into this county through active economic growth. So that's the answer. We need to bring business Absolutely. into the county Absolutely. for the revenues. Yes. May it be tax revenues or, or mm -hmm. services and things that they can provide. Um, so how, how do you feel there's uh, uh, on the board now, I know that not, not the board of directors, uh, with, within the county's pipeline of construction pro uh, projects are coming along. There's some new proposed, um, I, I don't know if they want to call them malls, but they're large area retail uh, uh, near the Kmart Center over there by Forney mm -hmm. off of that road there. And also the one that's uh, over by, that seems to be the causing the most amount of angst right now is the one that's talked about being developed by, what is that, Herbert Green? I think that's the right, right. school. Right. How do you feel about that? Well, I, I know that any economy that does not grow dies. You cannot um, stop development. There has to be development and growth um, to one degree or another. There has to be, or there won't be jobs. There won't be uh, food to go on our tables. Whether or not we regulate um, how we grow it is a very emotion-charged uh, controversy in our community right now. I do know that if we will allow small business to grow, that we will generate jobs here that will actually sustain our, our economy. Our uh, current budget crisis that we're facing in our, our county government is not brought on by um, an overabundance of spending, although I think there's a lot of areas we could cut. It's really brought on by the fact we have killed the business in our in our county. And as we've seen the business die, uh, jobs have gone away, the revenues have gone away. Um, this is the first right. year that we as a county government have faced the issue of a shortfall. We're not in debt. This is the year that our income intersected with our expenses. And our Board of Supervisors has taken a very hard look at how we limit uh, current services. But where the struggle comes for that uh, question is, if we don't actually take some hard cuts or increase these revenues, we're looking at some major, major shortfalls in the years to come. So this issue of how do we grow in business, um, I'm not real favorable toward big, big box stores that generate um, low wage jobs at the expense of uh, small business that actually generates incomes that many families can live on. Um, well, one of the things that we don't have in this county is any real high tech type jobs. Where you know, uh, at one point in time when Intel was going to come in the Folsom, uh, they actually were looking at El Dorado County, mm -hmm. and at that particular time, uh, people weren't for it, believe it or not, and that's why they ended up in Folsom. Um, the, how would we attract high-tech to Colorado County? Well, we actually do have some high-tech jobs in this county. Um, our Cameron Park Business Park and down the Latrobe Business Center down there, there are some relatively high-tech jobs. We have some software development companies here. We have, we have uh, aerospace manufacturing that you don't necessarily view them as high-tech, and yet some of these uh, uh, jobs are very technical in producing uh, the products they produce. Where we have struggled, uh, like the Latrobe Business Park, our county put a moratorium on new business down there because they, they've reached what they view as the, the capacity 
um, occupancy capacity down there. You've got all this land, you've got roads that work in that development down there. We don't have traffic jams, other than you might consider the uh, White Rock Latrobe uh, intersection. Um, so I think it's the busiest intersection in our county. But we've got empty lots waiting and people who would like to, to come in there, but the fee structure is too high. The permitting process and, and requirements are much too restrictive. And so they're just stifled and they're waiting. Hmm. Interesting. So when you talk about the fee structure, now you're talking about the whole permitting process? Ten uh, fees. Ten fees. Uh, building, all, everything related to building and permitting. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, so now we've got a two-edged sword with this. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about these fees, um, if you're talking about lowering them, of course that lowers the income that's coming into the county. So, you know, you've got this situation. How do you balance this? How do you balance out the need of the county with the need to bring business in? Well, unfortunately, it was not an overnight process to get here. Um, we, we have been seeing a decline in our business activity for years. And that decline is the cause of the current crisis we're facing with our uh, budgeting in the county. You don't have a simple solution, but for me and my family, and how I've run my business through the years, when I have a shortfall, I cinch up the purse strings, I limit my expenses, I really get tough on how I spend my money, and I get through. I work myself through, but I make those hard decisions that are necessary to be able to come out the other side of a crisis still uh, on my feet and running. See, that's one of the problems, though, with the small business. You're trying to get something started. I mean, we're an example of that here. We're, right. we're starting a, a new small business, and capital is, is very tight. Um, so w when you talk about cinching up, to attract business to a certain degree, you can only cinch so much. Mm -hmm. I still feel that there must be something that we can do that it that have set our county apart from other counties and attract business here and businesses that are not just the big box businesses right. but businesses that are uh, you know the high-tech businesses the uh, one of the things we've lost dramatically here are auto dealerships yes. they, they can't they can't stay and they were a great revenue source and we've lost that so again it's back to how do we balance the revenue needs of the county with attracting business. And, and, and I hear you're trying to give me an answer. But okay. What, what you're talking about is actually being done uh, in various places around the country. Uh, Florida has done it to some degree. Um, and I know that from firsthand conversations with some of our local business. Texas has done it dramatically. The policymakers there grasped this idea that small business is the stable uh, foundation of any economy. And in the last few years, Texas has generated over half of all the jobs created in America. In a recession economy, they're generating jobs. Um, one of our uh, aerospace firms that, that produces high-tech parts down here in Cameron Park, uh, Shingle Springs, I'm not sure exactly the line there, told me that, that a delegation from Florida came out to them uh, met with them and said, we will give you land, we will uh, allow you to build your building with no permit fees, just build it, we'll give you 10 years of tax-free operation, and we'll give you a monthly stipend toward labor costs yep. if you'll just move your operation to Florida. <laughs> well, they love California. I love California. In fact, I really love El Dorado County. And I know that it's going to take some hard choices at the county level to release people to work. And where the ir irony comes in this is we have people who are driving to keep these revenues high because otherwise they won't meet their budgets. But nobody's coming in. I mean, what? how many permits are being applied for? Yeah, yeah. And so do we, do we take 100% of five permits, six permits, or do we settle for maybe 20% of the current rates and we bring in 50 permits. Well, you know, there, there is just an amazing thing that happens when people 
find they have a chance to do something, they get motivated yeah. and they mm -hmm. move forward. And the entrepreneurial spirit of America has always been the thing that has led the world. We've seen it time and again. And this circumstance we have right now, can I say we don't have a bad economy? We have really bad policy. Mm -hmm. And people are just sitting waiting. I'm a contractor and I work all over this county. I work in Sacramento County, different places. I know a lot of people and work for them who have the money. They just say, are you crazy? I'm not going to go spend it there right now. But if they knew and had confidence that they could make a dollar, they'd get with it. No. no. So. Well, that's great. I'm going to jump to another area. Yes. Um, what is your stance on the Second Amendment? Well, I appreciate you bringing that up. I am a strong supporter on the Second Amendment. I believe that without the Second Amendment, the entire Constitution falls. Um, the, the Founding Fathers instituted um, our Constitution not to give us rights, but to recognize that we have inalienable rights. The Second Amendment gives us the means, and it's the intended uh, method, to actually enforce that tyranny from government, overreaching government, cannot enslave a people. And when we face uh, the Second Amendment, we're looking at uh, currently CCW law issues. Um, this whole issue of shall issue versus may issue. California is a may issue state. I believe 40 of our states are shall issue states. What it's done here in California is it's given uh, a climate to where um, the issuing of a CCW license is a political issue far more then it's a, a right. And I would like to see that change. I would strongly support legislation to change California's law to a shall issue policy. Um, this whole issue was one of the major reasons that I got involved with Sheriff John D'Agostini at the very beginning of his campaign and promoted him all the way through. He is a very strong supporter of the Second Amendment. And, I, and when I'm on the board of supervisors, I look forward to working with him as he continues to bring reform uh, on that issue uh, in our county. Um, That's great. Um, I, I'm, I'm really happy to hear you uh, bring that up. You know that I'm very much a CCW I, I person and yeah. Second Amendment type person. And, and love it or hate it, I am. And I'm glad to hear that you are, too. So uh, we're going to about wrap this up. But I have one, one question for you. If you had a magic wand that you could wave, how would you use it to fix the county? Wow. Well, I think that what I would do, truly, is desire that the, the heart and the mind of the people in this county would comprehend that we have all this business. We talk about high tech. Uh, we talk about, um, well, we haven't talked about our contractors. We haven't talked about the agriculture in this community. Um, we haven't talked about the, the people that make this community uh, what it is. When you generate um, a product that is sellable, whether it be from agriculture, whether it be mining, whether it be uh, timber, you generate something that is foundational to a stable economy. And we have consistently, over the past few, many years actually, we've stifled our mining. We've made it almost impossible for anyone to mine here. Now we have um, uh, the state coming in and telling us that our dredgers cannot work in the rivers when all the scientific information shows they actually clean the river. It's better for the rivers. It's healthier for our uh, fish. We need to go back to an economy that's based on agriculture, tourism, and, and funny how tourism fits in there, but it's, it's about the cleanest um, business you can have. People come into our community, they leave their money behind, patronizing our businesses, and hopefully when they go home, they're really happy they were here. Do you know that the timber industry in this county right now could sustain 250 million board feet a year, sustainable year after year. We are accessing maybe 15 at most. 
what we've seen happen too, because of the very anti-logging uh, industry attitude in this county, all of our mills have closed. The trucks generate um, revenue out of Lincoln. So they pay their taxes there, they hire their people there, we get nothing. It's all backwards. We need to put our people back to work here in this county. We need to see the revenues coming here because we produce something. Not because someone else is allowed to come in and take our revenues from us. Excellent, so. excellent. Well, we've got just a few seconds left. Let's wrap it up. I'll give you 30 seconds. Get that message out. Look right into the camera and you tell us your message for all everybody out there. Well, I, I truly appreciate the opportunity to speak today. I look forward with excitement to the days ahead here, El Dorado County, truly the most beautiful place uh, in California. We have the most diverse climate between the west and the east, and I just look forward to working with this board uh, in the days to come, and I would appreciate your vote in supporting me. Thank you very much. That's great, Richard. I really appreciate you coming and being with us. You know what? I'd like you to come back and, and we'll do this again because there's so many issues that you can't cover in the 30 minutes that we Very have. Uh, I really want to get you back here and I really appreciate you taking the time and, and you know, getting this message out is very important. Um, right. and, and our goal here in Old Guy Tech TV, of course, is to get everybody uh, to come on into our studio, tell us their thoughts, tell us their plans, because not any one person has all the answers. That's right. But, but you took the time to come in for us, and we appreciate that. And, hey, you know what? Thank you very much. Hey, you guys out there, this is Rob with Old Guy Tech TV. We'll see you soon. Thank you. This episode of Old Guy Tech TV is brought to you by Windfall. Windfall, all the resources for El Dorado County. Everybody needs a windfall. Don't forget to ask about the free classified ads. Windfall is available to assist you in promoting your business through affordable and effective advertising. Call Windfall at 530-621-1698 or send an email to info at shopthewindfall.com. And thank you, Winfall, for supporting Old Guy Tech TV. We'll see you next time.